What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be working on the GX470. So behind me here is our GX470. We got this thing a couple months ago and we've been doing just a bunch of mods to it. But today we're gonna to be showing you guys probably my favorite mod to date on it. So let's flip this thing around and show you guys what I'm talking about. So this here is our GX 470 this is a 2008 and we got this vehicle a few months ago and we've just been going crazy with all the modifications to it and we even got to a point where we made our own high clearance rear bumper for it and as you guys can see here it is super high clearance it's a little bit higher than the actual wheel and this is a 17 inch wheel um, obviously we have a lift on it so that helps it a little bit too but it's super high clearance and super low profile we didn't want anything bulky um, and the reason why we did it is because there's really nothing unavailable on the market that isn't bulky and it has a big old swing out so being that the GX470 has a door that opens sideways instead of opening up like on a 4Runner this was the perfect solution. So we were actually gonna make one of these ourselves, but we found that JW makes one already and this is it. So that's their logo right back there. And this thing is pretty awesome. You can mount a license plate light. This is LED and the wiring is right here. It runs inside and it relocates your factory camera and it has the perfect angle so you can see and as you can see here that mount sits perfectly in there and then this back here is the main portion of it which is strong enough to hold this tire so this tire here is a 34 and a half it is a 315 70 17 and it's an MT tire so it's a pretty heavy tire so this carrier has no issues at all with holding this size so I'm thoroughly impressed with this so when we were installing I was like man I don't know if it's gonna be able to hold this tire but the way that they built it the way that they basically reinforced it this thing is super strong so we are really really impressed with it so you guys will find this mount on our website at runningfortacos.com. Probably this week, we're gonna be loading more of their products. They make roof racks, they make some sliders and other really cool things for the Lexus GX 470 and 460. So you guys will see that pretty soon. So in this video, we're gonna be showing you guys how to install this tire carrier from the very beginning all the way to the end. It's gonna be super detailed. That way you guys can follow along. And we found that there wasn't any other real install video on it. There was a couple review videos, but no step-by-step -step video. So of course, being what we do or doing what we do, we made one for you guys to follow along. And uh, we wouldn't recommend this to you guys if we didn't like it ourselves. But one last thing we do wanna talk about before getting into the install is gonna be a little side-by-side -side comparison with a couple other tire carriers on the market so let's show you guys those real quick so we're gonna be showing you guys a few different tire carriers from other brands this one here is a CBI bumper obviously it is on a Tacoma and not a GX and I believe the JW tire carrier is probably the only one for the GX but I'm not exactly sure, but we're gonna show you guys a couple other different brands. So this is the CBI one. Let me go to the other side and show you guys the gap. So it does have this here, which is the main, like, I guess, gusset or strength of the tire carrier. And then this is the pivot point. So normally with a bumper with a swing out, you have to have you know at least a section like this to be able to allow for a swing out so this is the swing out here and we got about you know this much room 
behind there, so about a, a hand length back there. So that's CBIs. Let's actually show you guys a factory FJ Cruiser carrier. So this is a factory one. This is what comes on all of the FJ Cruiser. And this is kind of how we got the idea of doing a, a door mounted carrier. So this is factory and this is the JW one. So as you guys can see, this is actually a little bit snug or more snug. So this fits better. So maybe five fingers right there. And by the way, this is the 3.5 inch version. So that way this allows you to run up to a 35 inch tire. Um, and let me show you guys down here too. So this is the amount of spacing that's underneath there. That's about an inch or so. So that's the perfect amount of space that you want before hitting your bumper. So I believe the two and a half might be a little bit too tight and that down there would have been too close. So I'm glad we went with the three and a half inch version. So when you guys are purchasing yours, just make sure you guys are thinking about that spacing back there. So back to the FJ, let me measure back here. So it's a little bit more than five fingers. So this one is a little bit, you know, further apart compared to the JW. So this one actually fits better, but it's just as strong. So let's see if I can shake this thing real quick. So it doesn't really move even with this 35 inch tire. This one is a true 35 right here. 35 by 12 and a half by 17. So slightly bigger, probably about like half an inch compared to this one. And this does not move at all. And I've driven this thing for a few days now and looking back at it, it doesn't even rock. It's not going anywhere. So I'm pretty um, confident when we go off road, this thing is not gonna move at all. So let's come on over here and show you guys a couple more tire carriers from different brands just to you know show you guys different ones and what the other ones look like so this is our third gen Tacoma this is a C4 bumper the spacing is actually spaced a little bit more than the CBI one so as you guys can see there a lot of room but this one does have a tire or, um, I'm sorry a table fold down or a fold down table to use as a table to put whatever you want on it. But the good thing is that it's mounted really high. So that way, you know, if you don't lose too much departure angle for when you guys are off-roading. And then I'm gonna show you guys one more while we are here. This is our fifth gen Forerunner. Back here we have an Expedition, uh, Expedition 1 um, let's see, right there, Expedition 1, rear bumper. This one is super high up, as you can see here. So the bumper is down here, is just way up here, basically blocking the entire window in the back, so you know how high that is. And the spacing back here, pretty good. It's really tight back here. So that's what that is, or what looks like, and it's angled that way when you guys are like this on an obstacle you don't lose a lot of departure angle as well so i like this one a lot the c4 and the cbi one are also great you can only do so much with the tacoma just because it's already a truck it's longer than an suv like a fj cruiser a gx and a forerunner but uh as you guys can see here there's the angle so it's higher than the bumper but one last look before we get into the install. There's the GX. Okay. That's how high it is. Off our high clearance bumper on there. And then here's the FJ Cruiser. Okay. There's the bumper. Obviously the FJ doesn't have a high clearance rear bumper as of yet. So yeah, I think they did a really good job. So now let's go ahead and get into the install. Okay, so step one, we're going to need the neck support, the braces, hardware, tire carrier, and the neck. So what we need to do is align the neck. 
just like this and then put the hardware on flip it over and install the nuts on the back side so here's what we have this is the main piece here we got the tire carrier here i believe these are the supports and then the eight hardware um, bolt washers and nut that were sealed together so that is very neat that they did that so this is what we'll need so what we'll do is we'll put this one up first like so all right we'll line up the holes obviously so you guys can see there holes line up basically we're going to have one extra hole on top one extra hole on the bottom is where we want it and i believe you can adjust this if you want to afterwards so if you want it to go let's say all the way up or all the way down you could do that so i believe what we're going to do is we're going to have it all the way up and then we will attach it there and then let's grab these put that right in the middle same for this side like so and then uh, since i only have one hand i'm going to do this real quick tighten it up but you guys get the idea line that up in the center install the bolts and nuts Next up, we need to remove the inside panel and then the chrome that is on the outside of the door. So step one, we got to take this off, flip that, pull it down. We're actually going to remove this completely. Pull that tool set out. Next step, we have to access these two little square holes behind your factory net or cage, whatever you guys have. Um, if you guys have a cage, it's going to be a little bit harder to get back there, but totally doable. The bottom one doesn't seem like there is a screw, so there's just this top square um, that there is a Phillips that we need to pull out. So one screw. Next step, we have to remove the handle using the same tool. If you guys don't have one of these pry tools, you can use a flathead as well. So on the bottom. You have to pry it open to access behind there. There you go. Just pry on it just a little bit and then pull it straight out. There we go. Then we should be able to pull it out like so. You might have to use your pry tool again to get it out like that there we go and only one of them is spring-loaded the one closer to the um, inside of the vehicle is going to be spring-loaded but basically they just need to be cinched together and using the pry tool helps so now we can go ahead and pull this whole panel off same tool or if you guys have a plastic one get right in the corner pop it off just that corner will do then you just use your hands you should be able to walk around and pop the rest off with just a little tug okay once you get to the top you'll see here the the top trim will want to come off too since this one is underneath it you will have to pop that top off just a little bit right there so just so you can get it out but you don't need to pull it all the way off okay then the bottom part should come off like so on the back side there is a bunch of these white clips if any got stuck to the actual door take those off and slide them onto the actual panel themselves and then now what we need to do we need to pull off this dust shield Ours is blue, I don't know what color your guys' might be, but it's just basically just a really thick, um, you know, piece of plastic. So if you get the stringy glue that is around um, this shield or the plastic piece, just go through it with a razor and cut it. That way you're not pulling it off completely and then you have spots missing that when it goes back on. 
once you have that completely off, set off to the side, we are going to reinstall it, so don't lose it. Next step, we need to remove this big chrome trim on the back side of the door. So what we need to do is in here, we're gonna be looking for these little tabs. They're gonna be just right above this bulge here. This is where the license plate place pieces are. So we'll just look for those. They run all along the top here. And there are little tiny fingers that grab onto the sheet metal. This one I already squeezed together, but basically we need to squeeze it together and then pry it out. Just be real careful, just because those things are tiny and they could break and you don't really want it to go back in and have a small gap or anything like that. So I have the camera zoomed in so you guys can see the tiny clip next to my finger. So it's super small. We're gonna be using a set of pliers like this. This is made for clips. You see there on top, it's like if, if you were to pinch with your fingers, that's basically what it's doing. So you don't necessarily need these, but it does help out a lot. You can use a set of pliers and you squeeze like so, and then push through. So as you guys can see that it's loose now and I'm pulling it on the outside. But we're gonna do this all along the inside of this and then remove that chrome piece. So this part here is gonna be pretty tricky just because you gotta wiggle your way in there and pretty much find holes where you can get your hand in. But one of the spots, like this one clip right back here I had to go through here reach up and then um, push it out with one of the pry tools just because you couldn't get the pliers up in there but as you guys are doing it this is what it'll look like from the side something that I found that helped I basically put something to create some tension as I'm prying on the inside that way when I barely touch on any of the clips, like here, there are some white ones here that you gotta get from both sides to sort of focus. Um, but this helps a lot. So if you don't have somebody to hold this, give it tension, you know, grab something like a, some tape or anything to wedge in there to give it tension as you're working on the inside. Now what we need to do is remove the camera once we have this chrome piece off. And if you guys want to, at this time, paint it, wrap it, whatever you guys wanna do um, to the chrome piece while you have it off, this is the perfect time to do it. I always wanted to paint this black or wrap it, but uh, since we have a silver truck, it's actually not too bad. So I'm just gonna keep it. I don't know, I might change my mind, but we'll see. But once we have this off, We'll locate the camera, which is obviously right in the middle here. So this is the wire for it. So we'll go ahead and get this disconnected. Like so. And then we'll pull this out of the little hole that it's in. So just using my hands, I'm gonna undo the clips that are on the outside, so just the bottom and the top there. And now we can go ahead and get the camera off from the outside. From the outside of the truck here, there are two 10 millimeter bolts that we need to loosen, and it doesn't look like you can fit in there with a socket. So we'll just have to take those out with an open end wrench and just do it slowly. So it looks like we might have a small issue here. So you guys can see that I started to take those two 10 millimeters out, but it bought them out because it's hitting this piece here. So it looks like that piece might need to come out, but it doesn't look like it's too bad. There's one, two, three, four 10 millimeter, and then a few of these white clips that just need to be squeezed this way so it's not too bad so i'm going to pop those off and then finish taking 
those two 10 millimeter bolts out and then this camera should be able to come out. All right, so we got the four 10 millimeter. We pushed all the white clips through. We pulled it off just enough, as you guys can see here. That way we can pull those two 10 millimeters out and now we can remove the camera. So back here where the camera is, we're gonna need a flat head Go right next to that little clip, push it, and then push it down. I'm gonna do that to both sides. So we did that already, right? Maybe. Sorry, it's super hard to focus because it's way in there. Once you have both sides, there we go. Pushed it down. We'll come over here. There it is. Pull the rest of the way through. And then we got the camera out. Next step, we are going to see if we can center the carrier onto the back door here. So what we made is we put two pieces of tape on top, two pieces of tape on the bottom, kind of centered right there. And then uh, we measured the center, basically is this, use that. And all the way over, we just basically measured it came out to about 26 and a quarter or a little bit under that made a mark on the very top there and then we measure one inch and three eighths down from this edge down we put a mark there there and there and we drew a line all the way across and then on the carrier we put a piece of tape as well let me zoom in here and then we measured from edge to edge it was 12 inches so we marked six inches in the center there. Now we're gonna line it up to the door. Basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna line up the center line right there. We could probably bring that line down further so we can meet it. And then we got the line coming through to this hole over here, as well as the other side. So what we need to do now, we're gonna draw a line up and down so that way we can create a cross. And then we're gonna center punch it so that way we have somewhere to drill it. All right, so next we're gonna be using a center punch. So if you guys get a little bit closer, you guys can see where we made the marks. So right there and there, using a center punch, put it right on the mark, and then use, make, use this to make the indentation so that way your drill doesn't slide all over the place. So you can do that a couple times if you want. Okay. So in the instructions, it does tell you to use smaller bits and work your way up to a 516 drill bit. But our drill bit is a little bit different. Um, it, it gets, it's small at the very tip and then it gradually gets bigger. So we should be able to use to use the 516 drill bit to uh, get it started. So put it right on with a mark where we made the center punch and then we'll start drilling. And then we'll do the same to the other one. Put it right on the center punch. There we go. So the next step here, we are on the inside of the door. We're looking for this door handle bracket where the door handle was before. So there's gonna be these two um, brackets here. And what we did is we drew a line. We measured from the middle of this square, drew a line down the middle, and then we measured um, half an inch from the bottom up, and then we put a line across that. So this is what it'll look like once you guys have done so to both sides. Then we're gonna grab the center punch again, line it up with the very center of it. Do the same to the other side. And then we're gonna grab the drill. And if you guys don't have this kind of drill, you can work your way up to a 3 8 So we'll line that up with the middle. And then we're gonna drill through the bracket and through the actual door itself behind it. And 
then just make sure you guys are keeping it leveled and then go through the uh, material behind it. There we go. So I want to do the same this side here as you guys can see all the way through. Make sure it's leveled. There we go. So next up, we are going to be putting on the carrier itself onto the door. Before you do this, make sure you put um, this chrome trim back, put the camera housing um, back. We took the camera out of that, it's like a little square piece. It has two screws to, take, to remove it. And then bring your carrier up to the holes with the, uh, the top um, plate or uh, bolts. So line it up. We're gonna feed it in, just like so like that and then on the back of this there is a foam adhesive you could either remove it and stick it but realistically I think it's honestly just meant to pad this so it doesn't actually rub on the paint it's not really gonna hold up any weight so we're just gonna leave that and we're gonna use it as padding so on the other side inside here we'll come around that bracket that we slid in there we're gonna bring it on up. We're gonna put it around or through the hole. It's gonna be hard to see, but you guys get the idea of what I'm doing. And then using the washer and the nylon lock nut, we're gonna go ahead and tighten it up. We're gonna use it to just snug it up by hand and then we'll tighten it up later. Next up, we're gonna need this bracket here. This is the upper bracket that's gonna go inside the door. So it'll have this shape right here, this U shape, and it'll have this kind of an S bend right here. So we need to have the wide part on top. And we need to have this bend towards us. So we go through this hole right here, just like that. We're gonna feed it all the way over. And basically those two slotted holes are gonna go and feed through the holes that we just drilled on the uh, on the door brackets there. Slide it all the way over. And then the other side has holes for the outside bracket to feed through and bolt it in. Now that we have the bracket to the carrier fully tightened, we can now tighten this inner bracket to the inner door. So the back part right here. So what we need to do, grab the same size hardware as we use with the carrier. We're gonna put it through here. So go through here, feed it in like so. Actually, I forgot my washer. Pull that out. Put your washer on first. Feed it in. And then on the inside, we're gonna get another washer and then the nylon locking nut. Be careful with these. The bracket to the carrier was extremely tricky just because you basically had to uh, fish your hand all the way in there. But it's doable, but you're gonna have to do uh, some contortionate stuff to get it in there. So next up, do this other one, same thing, washer, feed it in just like so. And then a washer and then a nylon lock nut on the back side. And then we'll tighten this up and then move on to the next step. So next step here, we need to locate these two center holes on the main door. So if you look at, the, you'll look for this little square and this one next to it. Those two holes there, this template here, you can print um, from JW's website. I'll put it down in the description but we also cut out the holes on the very end. Those are the OEM holes. So we line it up with those holes, tape it down, 
and then the two black holes are the one that we're going to drill with a uh, 3 8 drill bit. So using a center punch, we're going to put that right on the center of the hole. Mark those. And then once you have it marked, you can pull it off. Those two indentations are going to be right there. Then using a 3 8 drill bit, or if you guys don't have one of these, you can use the smaller size working your way up. And we start drilling. Clean off any shavings and then we're going to use those holes for the uh, lower support bracket. On the outside we're going to be drilling the two lower holes. So using a center punch once again, find the center and then mark both sides. Double check and then using a 5 16th drill bit we're going to go ahead and drill it out. Once the first hole is drilled, grab a bolt and a washer, feed it through. Once you have that through, then you can drill the other side. There we go. Next step, we need to grab the downforce plate, which is this piece here, two tabs on the side, has this weather strip in the middle has some foam padding on the side and then this edge on the bottom here for the edge of the door. So what we need to do, I'm gonna grab the long bolts. We're gonna line it up like so. We'll feed it through and then we'll feed this side in like this. And for now, we can just keep it loose, but when we are ready to fully tighten it up, we'll need to put it over the lip of the door and then push up. But for now, we'll leave it loose and then we'll go on the other side. Now we're going to need this piece here. It's going to be straight on top. It has this arch. This is going to be for the lower um, carrier. So we're going to feed this through on the this big hole over here. Feed it all the way in. And then we're going to line it up with the two bolts that we fed through on the other side. Next up, we're going to need this bracket here. This is going to be a support bracket. that's like going to go inside the door again. So again, we're going to feed this in. Once we get here, we're going to rotate it. So the holes that we drilled here and here are going to line up with these here. So when it's in there, this is how it'll sit. So we're going to bolt those two to carrier, and then these two will go right here. So feed that in. We'll line it up with those holes, with those bolts. All right, so we have gotten the carrier to the support um, bracket just hand started so that way it's holding it. Now we're gonna need one of these, it's gonna come with two. One of it is gonna go on the inside and then the other one's gonna go on the outside. It's basically gonna sandwich each other with this. So in order to get this in here, we gotta come in, we gotta go under that bracket and then we're gonna slide it up, okay? Try and go from it from the side is not gonna work because of these edges. So we're gonna go underneath slide up. You guys can kind of see here that we're getting it lined up right there. See? As we move it around, we'll adjust it. So you guys see it moving. So the trick now is to get all these brackets to line up and then put a bolt through it. Once you guys have this loosely started, you can grab your ratchet um, or a drill and a uh, open end it in on the inside and then we're going to tighten it up. All 
right, now we are ready to pretty much tighten everything that we've installed so far. So we're gonna start from up here. We're gonna tighten these ones up first and then move down. So if you guys got anything on the inside, do that as well. And then down here with the uh, downforce plate, you wanna push it all the way down and then come around to this side down here. We're gonna pull it towards us and then push it up. Like so. That way that lip sits around the door like that and that foam sits on that and protecting the paint so that way it doesn't scratch up the paint. Now we can go to the other side and make sure this is gonna stay on as well. Once we have the downforce plate pushed all the way up against the paint with the foam piece in, in, um, in contacting it, we'll go ahead and tighten this. So on this side, on the outside, we'll need to hold it. And then inside the door, we will tighten it um, up and make sure everything's tight. All right, so we have the tire carrier fully tightened now. And then when you guys close it, it should just clear the tread plate, as you guys see here. If you have it all the way up, it'll look like so. That way it'll clear. So now we move on to installing the strike plate. So we'll open this all the way up. If you guys have a bolt here, which you guys should, take that off. We've already taken it off. Then what we need to do is to take it off by pulling it up, like so. Then if you guys have a little cover here, just pop that off with a flathead or a pry tool. Now we need to remove this entire piece. So underneath there, just start where the access hole is. You need to push it forward and then pry it up, okay? And then we'll come over, do the same over here. And they will all come up the same way. So push forward and then pry up. Work your way all the way over here. And this whole thing will come off. Then make sure you put this back so that way you can uh, lock the door in place. Like so, and then you can uh, loosely install that bolt if you want to, or we're just going to leave it. But the area that we're going to work is going to be right here. This is where the uh, strike plate is going to be, or the tongue actually is what they call it. Um, so we're going to need to cut a little section out of here for that, uh, that tongue. So before we go underneath the truck, there is a 10 millimeter directly in the center of the bumper so we need to take that off first set it off to the side and now we need to go underneath the truck so when you guys are underneath the truck we're going to need a drill with a 3 8 drill bit we're going to be drilling out two uh, spot welds on it so that way we can install the uh, um, rib nuts that they included so grab your drill. We're going to slide underneath and show you guys where we're going to be drilling. All right. So this is the 10 millimeter um, nut um, with where we took that bolt off on the other side. And then right here and right here are the two spot wells that we're going to be drilling out. So I'm going to use a uh, center punch just to mark a center. And then the 3 8 drill bit, put it right in the center. Make sure you guys are wearing safety glasses like I am, so that way you don't get it off in your eye. And then be a little bit off to the side so it doesn't drop on you. And then we're not going to drill through the actual subframe. We just need to basically make a little, um, just to break that spot weld out. There we go. So when the com bracket comes off, this is what it'll look like. And then you guys can go ahead and clean this area off and then put some primer on it if you guys want to. So next up, we're gonna need to cut out this section right here. And to give you guys a reference, there's a little arrow here. This is where the access hole was to basically get your spare down. So this is gonna be directly in the center. 
So look for that hole. You basically just trace this little area. It's gonna be for the tongue, so just, you know, it's, we made it just a little bit bigger than the tongue so you guys can see here. That way we don't have to make any adjustments later. So this is gonna go all the way in there. So what we're gonna be using is uh, this saw right here. Um, it is an air saw, but you guys can use like a Dremel or anything like that as well. We're gonna make that cut. So we'll start off with this side here. in and then we'll come down the right side it off so we were left with this little corner we just got to finish that off pull that off and then using a razor we'll just clean this all up so looks like we actually need to come down further because we put this in and it was raised a little bit like this so um, so it does need to come down all the way here so that way the tongue can sit completely flat. So be sure when you guys are doing it to come all the way out and then down this little corner as well. So we'll finish this cut off. So once we have it cut, again, this is what it'll look like. Come all the way down to the side. And once again, that black piece is gonna cover all this, well, the majority of it, so you don't have to worry about making it super pretty. Now, we'll go ahead and grab our tongue. We're gonna slide it in there. We're gonna center it with where we cut it. Push all the way to the subframe, like so. Okay. I'm gonna center it with exactly where we cut. And then, once you have it all the way pushed in, we're gonna mark it. Okay. Pull it out and then we're gonna center punch it. Now that we have those two holes marked and center punch, we're gonna need our drill and a 2564th drill bit. Or you guys can work your way up if you guys don't have one of these drill bits, um, just because it is a pretty big hole. So we'll go line that up. And then we'll start drilling it. There's one. Line it up with a center punch hole. Grab our tongue again, so double check, make sure everything lines up. And it does, which is perfect, right there. Now we are ready to install, I've been calling these rivets the entire time. They're actually called nut zerts. So a little bit different than the rivets, but pretty much does the same thing except with a bolt. So you can use this tool, which is the most traditional tool. You feed this in there, or you open this up first. Feed this in there like that, put it in the hole and then squeeze and then as you keep squeezing and pumping it'll flatten this head enough where those uh, those lines are. It'll squeeze it and then it'll create the pressure between whatever material you're installing it on. But 
I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna use this guy that we just got. Let's see what it is. Astro Rivet Nut Drill Adapter. We'll see. They call it a rivet too, so I don't know. But basically it does the same thing except it's powered and you're not pumping um, with your muscles. So we're gonna feed it in all the way like so. And then when we tighten this down, it'll squeeze it. I don't know if you guys can see that. But it'll squeeze it down and tighten it up. So I'm gonna feed this in here real quick, all the way in, and then we'll squeeze this. Hold this. There we go. All right, so once the uh, nut zerg is fully installed, it should not be able to turn or anything like that. And you can kind of see where it swole up and grabbed onto the metal around it. So we're gonna install the other one as well. Same exact way. Like I said, you guys don't need this. If you guys have this tool, this is a lot cheaper, I believe. Um, you can get that from like Amazon or Harbor Freight or, you know, Ace or Home Depot or anything like that. Okay. But this way is a lot easier, as you guys can tell, because it's all done by the drill and you don't have to do any actual muscle work. But there's that, fully installed, does not move. Now we are ready to install this, the tongue onto there, and then we can uh, drill the bottom hole. So what we need to do first, slide it in there, line it up, install the hardware. We're just gonna hand tighten for now. This is just basically going to give us um, a location of where uh, we need to center punch the bottom hole and drill it so that way it doesn't go anywhere. So I'm just gonna snug this up first. Doesn't need to be super tight. Okay, you guys can see there it's loose, but it's snug enough. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this down so that way that bottom part moves up and sits against the subframe. And then we're gonna center punch it. So this part, I'm gonna go back under the truck all right, so we are underneath the truck again. This is the tongue that we're working on. You guys can see it's still loose. What we need to do is just hold it up against the subframe, make that center punch hole. Look in there, make sure it is centered and it's not off to one side, which it is. I'll go ahead and remove the tongue. So I'm gonna go back up, take the bolts out and then take the tongue out, that way I can drill. All right, so we got the tongue off and our center punch hole is right there. We're gonna put our drill bit up to that. Make sure it stays right there. Same size drill bit, which is a 25 64th. So once again, be sure you guys are wearing safety glasses. Um, the shavings can get hot as well, so like wear some long sleeves if you need to. So, gonna use the same tool, feed it up there, like so. Now we can fully install the tongue, as you guys can see there, not moving at all. So, we fed the tongue back through, move it where we need it to be, and then we'll go ahead and get this bottom one started and then we'll move up to the top. Now that we're back up here, we'll reinstall these bolts. And then once you guys have these ones in, we can then fully tighten all the bolts to this tongue. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold this down as far as we can, just because we want it to rest on the bumper. So push it all the way down and then tighten it up.
Okay, once you guys have this top, as you guys see here, it's all the way down, it's hitting the bumper. I'm gonna tighten up the bottom bolt. And that will pull this straight and down as well. And then just to make sure everything is tight, um, use a ratchet to make sure it's tight by hand. And be sure not to over tighten them just because it is a nut zerk. So it has the potential to spin if you tighten it too much and then it'll just spin and then it'll be loose. So your black piece that covers this whole area here, we need to notch it out so that way the tongue will stick through that. So we're gonna remove the door piece again, lay this back in there. We don't need to clip it in there, we just need to know where it's gonna sit. So it's gonna sit right there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mark this section here and we just need to cut just enough and just as just high enough so this tongue can stick out without and being able to install or reinstall this trim without it sitting up the way it is. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure, see how thick this uh, this tongue is and then that's how high up I'll go and I'll mark the top so I'll we'll take trim off and I'll do that now that we got this little notch cut out there so I just measured it just to match what we got on there so put it back in there then we are pretty much going to be done with this part of it line it up and then clip everything in place There we go. And as you guys can see there, we got a nice cut right around the tongue there. Just enough to that, for that to stick out. And like I said before, you don't see anything um, behind there. So this is the only real cut that you need to make it look at least kind of nice. All right, so now we're gonna show you guys how to relocate the camera into the bracket that's gonna be on the spare tire carrier. So what we've done here, is uh, we've cut it so normally it'd be you know red to red yellow yellow black to black and then the other one which starts off black but it actually is just raw um, wire so that's how you can tell between the blacks so we cut that so we can extend it so here's what we've done so we got the new wire that we added the blue red white and black so blue we went to yellow red to red the raw one which is the only one that's actually not copper. Uh, we went to white and then black to back. So depending on what wires you guys use, just make sure you guys know what's on the other end. So that way, when you guys connect the other end to your camera, everything will be exactly the same and your camera will work. So now we move this to the truck. We can plug it in right here, put this back here. And then uh, actually, I'm going to actually wrap, wrap this up with some electrical tape just to keep everything together neat. Um, we don't have any heat shrink that is this thick or else I would say to use heat shrink. And I'm going to feed this through the camera hole and then we're going to come out the other side. So on the other side where the tire carrier is, as you see here, we got the other end of the wire that we just fed through. So we're not exactly sure if this is the... Uh, route that we're going to route the wire yet but right up in here let's see you guys can see where our factory camera used to be that's the hole where we came out on the inside we cleaned it up a little bit already so we put that back put some uh, electrical tape so you don't see any of the pink butt connectors and it, it just cleans it up a little bit better and you know keeps it everything nice and tidy after putting the spare tire on, we realized we forgot the license plate light. So what we're going to do is we're going to install a wire that is long enough to reach the license plate light. So it's going to be a red and black that comes out of the license plate light. The wire that they provide, I don't believe it'll fit. It might be really close, but we're not going to try. So what we've done here, we got some of our own wire. This is a two wire. Um, wire so inside of this installation there's actually two wires in there 
we fed it through the factory hole that has the camera wire that we ran it down. So what we need to do is we need to cut this and tap it into this section right here. So I'm gonna pull out my license plate light so you guys can see. So there's gonna be a green wire and there's gonna be a white with a black stripe wire. So I'm gonna show you guys how to use a tap and tap into that power. So we're gonna pull this wire off. Okay, so we cut it, we're gonna pull it off. So it'll expose the two wires that are in there. And we're actually gonna include these wires when you guys purchase it from runningfortacos.com. Uh, pretty much anything that, uh, that you guys are gonna need extra. So these, the four wires, which are gonna actually look like this, but it'll have four wires on the inside for the camera. And then we'll also include some parts here that you guys will need, which are gonna be the heat shrink, the butt connectors, and then the connectors for the, not the butt connectors, sorry, the heat shrink, the T-tap, and then the connectors for the T-tap. So I'm gonna show you how you guys, how to use this. So we're gonna strip it back just a little bit. Once you have it stripped, we're going to slide the heat shrink over one of the wires. Doesn't matter which one you start off with. Slide the T-tap connector over that. And then we're gonna crimp it. Give it a little tug so make to make sure it doesn't come off. So these connectors don't have heat shrink on them, which is the reason why we're putting the um, heat shrink over it. Then we're gonna do the same for the other wire. Slide the heat shrink on. Put the T-tap connector on. And then we're gonna crimp that down. Tug it, so we're good there. And we'll go ahead and shrink those heat shrinks to make a waterproof seal around the wire since it's so close to the back door that water could get in, corrode it. And there we go. So you got the T-cap connectors on there. The one thing you guys will need to pay attention to is when you look down the connectors, make sure the metal piece is directly in the middle because sometimes it slides off to one side and then when you try to plug it into the T-tap, it actually doesn't actually make connection and then uh, it won't work. So make sure the metal piece is centered. This here is the T-tap piece. And if you guys have been on our channel before, you guys know how to use this, but I wanna show you guys real quick. So with the T-tap here, we're gonna need to clip it to whatever wires you guys are clipping it to. I'm gonna trim the sleeve back a little bit so we can have a little bit more working space. So, license plate. There's gonna be a green wire and a white wire with a black stripe. It doesn't matter which one you include or you install the T-tab onto first, but it will matter when you guys are connecting it to the actual T-tab connectors. So we'll put the T-tab over where the metal is. We'll close that. And then using a pair of pliers, squeeze it shut and you guys will hear it click. Just like that. That means it's locked in, it's made connection with the copper wire or the wire that's on the inside. And then we're gonna do the same to the other wire. All right, now we got both T-taps on. So you guys can plug this in and then put the license plate light back into the factory license plate housing. So we're gonna plug it in real quick. We're gonna plug the red to the green. Okay, and you can see, because the pink is clear, 
so you can see if the metal actually goes into it or it goes off to the side. So be sure to pay attention to that because if it doesn't go in, it's not going to work. And then of course test everything before finish buttoning everything up. So that's what it's going to look like when you guys have this thing all together here. So there's that. We're going to feed this back into there and, and then with this piece you guys can just trim it or whatever. So we'll just cut that off. So that way it's just not dangling on the side of there. There we go. I'm going to push the new wires down and outside. Okay. And then we'll feed the license plate light back into its factory location. Next up, we are going to be installing this piece here. This is going to allow you to attach that license plate bracket that I showed you guys earlier. So we will put this on. They provide you with some black lug nuts as well. But if you guys have the locking lug nuts, install those instead. That way they match your wheels and it makes it harder for people to try to steal your spare. So. Once we have this plate on, we'll grab our wheel and throw the wheel on. So on the outside here, we're gonna test out the license plate light real quick. So I have trimmed this back with the razor, pull that off. I'm gonna strip a little bit of wire off here. Then now I'm just gonna go turn the truck on and then we're gonna see, um, just touch these pretty much and make sure it turns on. So we have just turned the license plate on. I know you guys probably can't see it right now, but connect these real quick. I'm just gonna touch it and make sure it lights up. And it does. And if my arm wasn't in the way, there you go. Off. On. So there it is. Now that we have verified that it works, we'll go ahead and install the license plate holder and show you guys how to connect these. So what we're going to do is we're going to install the license plate lights onto this frame. So we pulled it off the wheel. So what we're going to do here, we got our license plate lights. We pulled off the washers and nuts on the back side. I'm gonna feed the wire through the slot and then we're gonna feed the bolts through the slot as well. And then on the back side, reinstall the washers and the nylon locking nuts. And then we're tightening it down. Next up, let's get the camera mounted. So in the kit, you guys will get this piece right here. This piece will actually be raw metal when you guys receive it. And the reason why they give it to you raw metal is because you might have to make some changes, widen some of these spots to fit your camera. So from what I got from them is that there might be five or so different cameras so you guys might have a different looking camera than i have with the back slightly different so i'm gonna put this on the back of this so you guys can see what mine looks like so your guys's camera like i mentioned might look different than mine on the back it'll have this rubber piece and then the way we took this camera off of the little mounting bracket that is now on the back of the door are going to be these little tiny screws okay so this piece like i said will be raw metal we already put some steel it um, stainless steel paint on it but basically on the back side it'll line up like that so we made this corner rounded we used a uh, drill and some stuff to pretty much round it out the holes line up all right so we got the camera mounted here and we were able to get it pretty straight with a little bit more modifications so you look on the back there how to 
cut that pretty much where that slot is over there. But we made it work and it's on there pretty good. So that's, we got that straight. This is the connector for it. We'll just plug that back in in a little bit. But next up, when you guys are getting ready to mount the actual camera to the license plate frame, going to go I believe on the back side just like this or actually it might go on the front now that I'm seeing it so what we need to do is we'll need to make two holes so one over there and one over here center punch it and then we're gonna install that with some uh, some hardware that they provide so this screw here and I believe there's two little nuts as well so we're gonna attach that to those through there and then onto the frame but like I said, we're gonna to have to center punch that and uh, drill out on that bracket, like I said. Now that we have the whole center punch, we can go ahead and drill it out to the size, this here, size that the uh, hardware is. That way it'll fit through there and we'll be able to install that. So the size we're gonna be using is an eighth inch drill bit here. Next, we're going to be mounting the camera to the bracket. So we'll flip this loader to show you guys here. Put it on like that. Okay. We have already marked and drilled our holes, as you guys can see here. So we got two holes right there, one on each side, to correspond with the bracket that they include. Like I mentioned before, this bracket will be raw, so you guys will have to paint it or spray some steel it on it to keep it from rusting and then we mounted it on the back there to the camera with the two screws that came off the bracket before so now and uh, we're going to mount it to the license plate bracket here one thing you guys will need to make sure is that the camera is going to be the proper orientation so with mine this label here is going to be on the top of it so let's go ahead and get it mounted with the screws that JW provides, we'll feed it through the top. So, and on the back side, we will install the nut. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to show you guys how to connect the factory camera wires to the JW harness that has the disconnect on it. So another thing we're gonna include if you guys purchase with us is gonna be the butt connectors to connect everything, including what we're gonna do here. So what we need to do is we're gonna strip this back a little bit. Okay, once we have the wires stripped, we're gonna connect it to uh, our factory camera wires. So on here we have blue, green, um, red, and black. So we're gonna connect the red to red, black to black, and then we have yellow and the silver is gonna be the odd guy. So we'll do So I'll get this connected. And you guys really just have to remember this on the other end when we connect it to the wires on the actual truck. Once you have all the butt connectors connected to either side, just make sure you guys plug it in and remember which wires go to which. So this is what it'll look like when you guys have the factory camera wire connector butt connected together. In the middle, there's gonna be that disconnect that we can take off. On the other end, what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect it to our wires that are coming out of the uh, inside of the truck. So we installed the butt connectors earlier so what we're going to do now is just remember which wires are the original colored wires and then just connect it to here. That way, when we're all done and the 
tire is on and everything, we can disconnect this from here. Spin this off, pull this off, and then now you guys can pull off your tire. And when you're done, line this back up, reconnect it, spin this back on, and you guys are good to go. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna connect all of our wires. So our red has been red to begin with. So we're gonna connect the red to the red. That one is easy. Black is also black. And then if you guys forget, you guys can also open up your door. Since we didn't put anything back yet, you guys can see which color corresponds to which new colors that we just installed on the wires. So black to black. Once you guys have both sides connected, what you want to do is test your camera, make sure everything works before you tape this up and then move forward. Next up, we're going to do the same to the license plate lights. So let's go ahead and strip this back a little bit. Do the same to the wire that is provided by JW. Then we'll install the butt connectors to the wires. This is the JW wire that I'm doing that to right now. Doesn't really matter which side you install it on as long as they connect at the end. On the opposite side of the date, the wires provided by JW, we're gonna attach that one to the actual license plate lights on the plate. So we'll show you guys that in a little bit, so don't connect that one yet. What we will connect is the wires coming out of the truck to the ones that we just connected. Once you guys have that done, you guys have tested the backup camera to make sure it works. You can go ahead and tape everything up so that way it's clean and it's protected. Once you guys are done, this is what it looked like, backup camera. We're gonna actually unplug these and then we're gonna go to the other side. Same for the backup camera connector, disconnect that as well. Now, over here on the table, we have our plate with the wheel plate underneath it, as you'll see. I'm just using this pretty much as a table. But here's what we got here. So this wire is going to be for the backup can or um, license plate lights, and then this other wire, we which we have already connected, is going to be for the camera. Okay. So the only ones we need to finish connecting up is going to be the license plate light. I'm actually going to trim this back a little bit more to give us some more wire to work with. Put the butt connector on there. So on the back side of the license plate lights here, we have the red and the black. So it's pretty obvious what we're gonna do here. We connect the black butt connector or black wire with the butt connector to the black. And then obviously the red to the red. And then we'll just heat it, seal it up, activate the sh heat shrink and silicone inside. Then we will go ahead and tape it up as well. We really don't have to, but we do it just because we want to hide the pink and just protect the wires a little bit more. There we go. So now this license plate connector is ready to plug up with the one on the actual vehicle. And then same goes for the uh, camera. So for the camera, we'll go ahead and just plug it in now while we are here. So with the camera, line up with 
where it needs to go. There it will clip in. And then this is what we'll have. Okay. We've got our light camera, license plate light. Now we're ready to install this to the truck. So we remove the license plate piece first. We'll need this to install the truck. So now we are ready to go. We got our camera and license plate light. This is our uh, license plate holder bracket. So we install that first. Then we'll need to grab our tire. There we go. Got our tire on there. So JW does provide you with some lug nuts, but we are actually going to use the same lug nuts that we have on our actual wheels. So we're gonna do the same lock. So it just keeps it all the same. So lug nuts on there, just so that way the wheel doesn't fall off. Once you have those snug down, go ahead and torque it. Once you have that torqued, we're gonna pull the wires that are coming from inside through the spokes preferably the middle spoke so as you can see here we have plenty of wire to work with now grab your license plate um, and camera holder feed it in there make sure you guys have the wing nut backed up so that way you can slide it in we'll go ahead and connect these now too so with these there are a little camera or a little arrows so we just need to line them up, push it together all the way, and then tighten it up. Same for the camera. Line up the arrows, push it in, tighten it up, screw it in. Okay, and then we can feed the rest of the wires to the back. And then we can straighten our I'm going to push this in all the way, straighten this, and tighten it all the way down with the wing nut. There we go. Then you can install your license plates. They do provide you with some black um, bolts, some gold washers, and um, gold grade 8 nuts as well. But we actually found some black washers so that way it'll match with the black bolts so we'll put those on with the black washer okay. really i don't think you need the washers but they just make it that way it's not just barely grabbing on to the license plate this side in as well and then put these nuts on the back side then we can come back on the inside we are getting ready to put the dust shield back and just make sure you guys put out everything that you guys took off Once you guys have made sure everything is back, the bolts you guys took off are back, you can then reinstall the dust shield here. We'll just go around, push back everything in place, and then we'll go and make sure we cover every little inch. Now we are ready to reinstall the panel here. So remember, we gotta go underneath these parts here. There we go. It 
should all pop in if you guys lined it, especially the bottom and the top. And if pop the sides in as well. And there's that one screw right here. Let me just line that up. Then, after you put the screw in, reinstall the cover for that. Then grab your handle, and reinstall the handle here. Once you have the handles all the way seated, grab the clips for the bottom. It will slide straight in there. That'll lock the handles in there. There we go. So double check everything, make sure we have all the insides done and we are completely done. All right guys, that is going to be it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully it was helpful if you guys did try to install one during this video or followed along with this video or if you guys are getting one make sure you guys use the link down below in the description you guys can find it at runningfortacos.com and that's going to be it for this video we will see you guys next time peace